Hello and welcome. Today's lesson is going to teach you how to draw a, a seashell in pencil. Super fun. So I've been looking forward to doing more graphite lessons with you and we'll get started first with the line drawing. Here we have my line drawing and our blank piece of paper, eight by 10. And we don't have to do a big grid on this. We mostly just need a plus sign so that we can tell where we are. So we'll find the middles and draw a plus sign. Now that we have our paper divided into four equal parts, we've got our grid, we can start drawing our seashell. So this top part, when we look at a seashell, we know that it spins. Uh, it's kind of amazing because you, you know it was alive and it grew this way, but it feels like it was like liquid or something at some point, the way like it formed in this spiral nature. And this part of the shell can be pointier, but you notice it has like a bend on this one. And this part has that flow like fabric too. Super cool. And it goes from small tips or points on this spiral to large ones on the outside. So super fun. And we're just gonna start with this one up here, which just ends up being like a diving board sticking off the top there. And then we're gonna put a number one at this end because that's where this bit tail is. And I'm gonna start down here and go ahead and kind of run that curvy bent and then it goes above the line and follows and kind of nests right on top of that line. And I get to go from this line kind of down like a roller coaster ride until I connect with my number one. We've got that whole quadrant done now. Super cool. All right, and then we've got this kind of overlapness here. So the next one is still a diving board, which is a bit lower here, and we'll have a one. And this kind of curves back almost all the way to this line. And then this one curves down and out so that you get this almost like strange mountain range, the way it overlaps like that. Um, and then I'll have where this ends, a new one starts and is straight and bend. And then we've got another one up. This needs to be smaller so that this pointy part can kind of head off in this direction. So I've got there. Then I can do this. And now I can put this lovely bend for this point coming in this direction. All right. And then I've got this curve under the line. Here's the line. Under the line. And then I get to do that fun bend like that. This connects here. We get the thickness of it going this way. Super fun. Okay, then we get to connect across. So from here to here, or vice versa. So so this is the bulk of the shell, and this is going to be the hole going inside. And I create that shape for that shadow. And then we've got our frills coming around the outside with that other bend there. So I'm gonna lay in that bend. The 3D nature of the thickness. It's going to curve all the way back to there. And then this shows the space going in. All right, so a pretty simple line drawing, actually, and a very great looking seashell. And this is a conch shell, I'm pretty sure. Um, and so I encourage you, since art is mostly about looking and seeing, you spend more time looking and seeing than you do drawing, uh, that you spend some time on the internet, just Google image conch shells. Um, or maybe you have some shells from where you've been on vacation at some point and you've been to the beach. Uh, pick them up, hold them, look at them closely, look at that spiral, look at these, these bumps and how it gets smaller as it gets pointier and 
and larger, um, spend some time with them before you draw them so that you'll know what is going on. And now we're gonna spend some time shading this and we get to use a new art supply, our kneaded eraser this time. All right. Oh, we should erase our plus sign. Okay, I'm ready to turn this line drawing of a seashell into a shaded, more realistic sketch of a seashell. And I have all the supplies I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use a number two pencil. I have a Stadler PVC free plastic eraser. I have my Manonak Tombow detail eraser for tiny, tiny bits. I have my number four paper blender stick and I have my stretchy, kneadable eraser. Now I wanna point out, um, if you got a kit from the library and this is your first time doing a pencil drawing with me, then yours will be neat and clean like this. But if you got one a few lessons back uh, when we did the Cherub and the Dragon, yours may be getting a little bit more gray like this. Well, I prefer this. It's way easier to do shading when it's already gray like this. Um, but I want to teach you if you have a brand new one so that you have, um, so you know what the, the experience would be for starting with a new one. Uh, but please, if you have one of these, you are in good shape. So don't, don't despise this little guy. He has the winning, winning graphite collection here that will make shading much easier for you. All right, I'm going to clear all this stuff off out of the way. And <clears throat> first off, I want to start building up shadows in kind of the darker areas where the shadows would be on this seashell. And I'm going to have the light come from like this direction down and across the shell. I think that will be the most striking way to shade this um, so that we can have the, the darkness of this hole and show some of the flutes of this like curvy parts and get these peaks on. So anyway. Light's coming this way, so my darks are gonna come from this way. And we talked about this a little bit in some of our meetups, that we don't wanna press with all of our might, even when we're trying to get a super dark shadow on there, because if we press super hard, then it turns all shiny, instead of keeping that um, black look that we want. And then it suddenly, suddenly you can tell that graphite is a metal because it gets all shiny when you press super hard and that burnishes the page. So you can kind of see I'm building up this darkness with gentle layers instead of pressing super hard. All right, so that's the darkest place there. And kind of got the smooth top part here, which would have more light because it's flat. And then we got this point. So just when you go past this curve, then the light doesn't get to there as much. And then flat. And so you kind of have a pattern of the vertical parts have more shade than the horizontal parts. All right, <clears throat> and then we have this little fold that kind of happens here so that there's some darkness kind of goes under this lip area. Okay. <clears throat> got that side and now we're going to return to this area and probably have have a shadow coming on this side of this and this side of this and all these little things will have a dark side
Okay, so this is a lip on this edge of the shell, which means under this overhang, it's gonna be pretty dark, dark too. All right, you can see it's starting to take shape. And I'm just really excited about this hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and get inside of that hole because we know that's gonna be pretty dark. And notice I changed the angle because ergonomically, it's just easier for my pencil to go in this direction. All right, so those are the dark places in there. And then we're still gonna have some shadow under this overhang. I think I need to kind of connect that that way. Yep. So I can get the shadow under here. Now I'm gonna get these nice little flutes, or I don't know what these are. Oh, I'm gonna get this dark part in for here first. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so they kind of radiate in and they start at the high end on these little curves. And I'm going to use kind of like tornadoes. So they're wide and then they get skinny. Wide and then they get skinny. And you notice I'm not spending a lot of time erasing right now. So even my hands making handprints everywhere. That's okay. We, we're going to just let all of that get everywhere. Um, because we're going to use that to our advantage in just a moment. So if we get too fastidious erasing all those little shadows, we're going to get rid of something that will be useful to us. So you want to let that be. side here <clears throat> and these will go in this direction now you can see those ripples that that creates in there Okay, and this is where the darkest shadow is, but there's gonna be some medium dark coming out from here. So the shadow didn't stop abruptly where that line was created. It's just, it's where the darkest part of the shadow stopped. Now I'm going to add a little thickness to the edge of the shell over here. So kind of where we have our line, it's going to go a bit wider. And to keep things simple, we're not going to worry about 
having a background. We'll just have it where it's got like a white background. And put a thickness. Think of like um, if several sheets of newspaper are together, you got a newspaper laying on your table with multiple sheets. So you've got the thickness of the calcium shell here. So that's what I'm drawing back in with these multiple lines communicating this edge. You don't want super smooth either. <clears throat> so if you've taken a look at an oyster shell, any any seashells, they've got that bumpy thickness on one side, and we've got this smooth inside here. So that's where they, they meet on these edges. All right, now we're going to add a shadow in this area. So he had, we kind of started here. And I'm using a little bit of something called cross hatching, <clears throat> cross hatching, where I followed this shape and then I've gone opposite. So it has like that tic tac toe feel. So those lines have direction to them. Okay, I'm going to get a shadow coming across. I'm using <clears throat> lines in this direction to show that it has that curl feel. And notice I don't go all the way to this line because there's going to be some reflected light where that edge is next to the darkest part there. So if I go all the way to the edge, I'm going to lose that reflected light that's really great at making that shape. Right, now I'm going to cross hatch and go the other way, up this way. I'm not going to get close to those little edges there. Okay, I want to try to run maybe a line. From these shadows. And I'm not afraid of putting a little too much at this point because that's what we're going to use our kneadable eraser to get some more uh, gentle changes. Okay, I'm going to run some lines from this point. Almost like spider webs, or, or even a little bit like the Bay Bridge. Together, supporting threads of the strength coming across here for this design. All right, so let's take a look at that for a minute. Make sure our shading is heading in the right direction. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to take a little break and start using my paper stump. And so the places that I've been, I'm going to start rubbing them and they're going to get really smooth. Uh, you can hold it like this to get that full side on things. See how it, it covers more surface area if I hold it on the side. You can see the full length of it that I'm using. Um, or you can hold it like a pencil, but you won't be able to get that whole length. But you might have more control, so if that's important to you, you can do it either way. So you notice more control, and then this is just more surface area. I think I prefer most, more surface area because I get more results quicker. Go 
blend all that. And notice it's okay if I go outside the lines because we've determined we're going to have a white background. So we'll just clean that up in a minute. All right, and to notice it was a brand new stick and now it's got a nice dark area here and our seashell no longer is white. We've pretty much gone everywhere and gotten rid of any bold white because I'd rather put it in on purpose and then it's way more fun. I can be intentional about it and we can put those highlights exactly where we want them. All right. Now I'm going to wait to clean up the background till later, uh, but now that everything is blended and muted, some of my dark parts got lighter and my light parts got darker and I'm not going to erase yet. I'm not going for white yet, but I want to try to lay in um, some of the line work again. So drawing with pencil tends to be a bit repetitive um, and it just gets built on little by little. So we're going to go back, find this edge and get that back on there. Now, for the most part, I'm going to get all my lines back with one exception. I'm not gonna redraw this line right here because that's just where shadow ends and the new shell begins. So I don't want to have a sharp line that says, okay, here's where it stops, okay? Uh, we want that to be more subtle. So I'm not gonna retrace that line, but pretty much everything else is gonna get retraced. So you can go ahead and do that now, and that will be a doable step that your brain can kind of relax for a minute while you're just tracing everything. And you can see that even while I'm tracing, I'm building it up instead of just drawing one hard line. I'm trying to kind of create an edge instead of drawing a line. All right, I've retraced all my lines again. So you can see the shading is still there. There's still mushes out here. Don't worry about that. Um, and I did not retrace that. So now I'm going to go back. And again, there's lots of repeti repetition when you're drawing in graphite. And though I will go back and put where I think the darkest parts are again. So I'm going to come back to here and lay those darkest shadows again across this curve. And of course, back in our dark shadow under here. It's like a pocket under here. Oh, it reminds me of a pocket in my softball glove. This indentation inside of here. Yeah, the resident has moved out, but at some point a conch was a living thing and would have lived in here. And then who knows, a hermit crab maybe joined in there at some point, but probably not. They, probably, they prefer the other kind that are not quite as heavy as these guys.
Okay, for this next part, any thinking person would be like, <sighs> because I'd like for you to blend it again, uh, but know that like we might have to draw darkness back in again. So repetition, layering, blending. So I'd say this time we won't rub quite as hard. So we'll use a little bit more gentle pressure so that we don't have to do a lot more extra um, repetition of including those darks again and again. But I'm gonna kind of drag this over. Get that smoothness. Blend that up a bit there. Especially in here, right? You don't want this to go away. I'm going in little circles, little circles. Following that shape. kind of dragging these into the middle here. To create that frill. Yep, so I want to get some darkness over here on this side to show the underneath where the light doesn't get to on this side over here. almost becomes the shape of a kite in this shadow here. Okay, and some blending on that. this this way a little bit to help with this cone shape that we have. Alright, so that's enough putting dark on for now. And now we're going to get our stretchy eraser out. So our stretchy eraser creates more gentle transitions of erasing. So um, you kind of like see how you press it down and pick it up and you get Things erased that don't have a sharp line to them. 
see that? So I'm pressing it here in this space to create that light kind of shining across the surface of this shell. And it's very gentle in getting it. And there is something very satisfying about erasing this way. You can see it's getting on the eraser um, and creating that high point across the top of this shell. It's very different than if I was using this one where I will get like a sharp edge. Now I'm gonna want a sharp edge in a minute, but not in this particular place. So it's very nice to do it this way to get that gentle curve that we're looking for. We know this shell has a bend to it, so you can kind of pick up and it won't damage your paper. Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever had the experience where you've erased too vigorously and you've like erased a hole in your paper. Uh, this is a nice safe way to erase that won't damage your paper. So now let's do a bit of picking up kind of like about here. And this area. very fun to get that kind of feel. All right, um, and more with this eraser next month too. So we get a hang of how to use that. And now I am going to switch to my Tombow eraser stick where I've got a good detail eraser here to get line work out. And I'm going to use this to erase a nice highlighty edge right here from this shell so we get that crisp light side to those points Include a few little points there in the middle. And we've got this nice edge. talked about the horizontal parts were where the light was and the vertical parts were where the shape was. So we got those like thin. And then we talked about this reflected light here along this edge. some reflected light up here on our edge here too. really is kind of like drawing fabric, even though this is more rigid. Um, if you're looking for a fun activity, it is fun to kind of wrinkle some fabric and shine a light on it and practice drawing the folds and curves of fabric. It'd be a good exercise for you if you're learning to draw with pencil more. looking very good. 
All right, now you may want to come in and draw some striations for maybe some pattern that's actually in the shell. So we found all our highlights and dark lines, but sometimes these shells get some rough striations in them. So I can find those little marks. This is more about an actual mark in the shell, not about shading it or coloring it. So I really tried to get the shape and the shade, the form of it in first. And it's more smooth on the inside. So this would be kind of on the outside that there would be these patterns. And it's starting to get smooth under here, so I'm not going to go under there. And I'm using just like an edge on my pencil. I could have sharpened my pencil really sharp to get these lines but I can feel an edge that I'm using to draw with. And they're kind of like rows, really. Rows of lines. So I've got that on there. And you can use a brush to clean this off, or you can use your hand to clean it off. And I feel pretty good that I've got a good drawing of the seashell. And so now I'm just going to clean up around my outside to get it nice and pristine. Um, so I'm going to use my big eraser Look how clean that is to erase far away from my seashell. And then I'll use my detail eraser to erase up close by so that I don't accidentally erase the seashell that I like. Now that I've erased all the way around, I'm going to take a tissue to kind of sweep off any of these eraser shoeblings to see if I really made it. And it looks like I've got a few places left to clean up a bit, so I'm going to come back in with the big things. So I'm I'm trying to erase lightly or sweep off lightly with this tissue so I don't drag the graphite over. Uh, two things now. This graphite will keep getting places, see like the side of my hand. Um, there is something called workable fixative that if you want you can spray your finished pieces with and then they will stay without smearing. I don't like to use it because it has some pretty bad chemicals in it. Uh, so if it's something you decide you want to use. Uh, Krylon has a pretty good brand. Spray it outside. Do not breathe it. Hold your breath. Wear a mask. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I'm not going to use this stuff because it's bad news. Um, but that's something that I get asked a lot. And so that's the right answer, um, even though I don't recommend it. So a secondary answer would be you know, kind of use your tissue to, to clean it off and then um, store it using tracing paper. So this is a sheet of tracing paper, and you can see I can fold this tracing paper 
and I can store it this way and I can see what I've got behind my tracing paper in my portfolio. Um, and I can even use tracing paper under my hand um, as I am drawing so I can rest my hand here and draw without getting um, smears on the side. So I recommend tracing paper instead of a chemical spray, but you can do what you want because you're grown. All right, and so we get, I just like to do a few little extra highlights. All right, but I feel pretty good. That looks done to me. Um, now, it can be completely done, or if you are someone that needs a shadow on your surface, uh, you can take your stick now and kind of lay in a shadow underneath of things. Um, so this part would kind of be raised. I'm guessing a shadow would happen about here so that your shell would be firmly planted on a surface. Um, so you don't go all the way around it because this is like standing up. Um, so about to here is probably as far as I would go. And if you pick up part of your shell when you're doing the shading, you will have to go back and redraw that edge. And I would still erase first before I laid the shadow in. So that order is still recommended. I'm gonna use my dirtier stick to get more shadow over here. See how handy that dirty stick comes in? It's like nice. Have more graphite, more graphite. Okay, and then redraw those edges back in. And I can use my stretchy eraser got any part of my shadow that kind of over, overstepped its little bounds here. Okay. All right, and of course, you got to take responsibility for this and sign it. 2021. And when you remove your tape, remove it low and at a right angle. All right, thank you very much. I hope to see you at one of our meetups. Have a great day. Bye-bye.